Hey, Jonesy babes, and welcome back to my channel. You down with PCFP? Yeah, you know me. You down with PCFP? Yeah, you know me. You down with PCFP? Yeah, you know me. Who's down with PCFP? Everybody, shout out to PCFP. That is phone calls from prison for dropping another video. So today, we are going to talk about the video between Grand Theft Nesto and Mother Shirley Strawberry. Now, tonight, we got four calls. Four. Four calls. Now, the first call was November 28, 2022. Um... They're talking about what happened on the news. And, you know, she said that she's ready for Jesus to come back because I think somebody had got shot and they were, you know, young kids of around 12, 13, and 14 years old. And, you know, they're talking about the crime and everything. And she said she's ready for Jesus to come back. And, of course, Nesta with that monthly laugh, <laughs> he starts laughing at that. Like, that's funny, which is not, you know. And um, she's just sick of all the crime and everything that's been going on and stuff like that. So that was the phone call that kicked it off. And then Nesto said he thanked God for what um, he has. Um, what is it that he have? Right now, he don't have nothing. The only thing he has is Shirley at this time. He only has Shirley. And he, only, he was only trying to hang on to Shirley because she is... The Strawberry Credit Union, okay? That's where his money is at. She's paying for those that lawyer. That's where the money is at. So that's why he said he thanked God for what he has. Because he don't got nothing in jail. But he still had Shirley at that time in the Strawberry Credit Union. She said she's trying to get her... um credit score up, you know, because she's still talking about getting a place, which I, which is understandable, and she wants a car. So, that's what she was talking about, and she got to get her credit score up for that. Now, I'm going to say this. Shirley should be living her best life right now, at that moment, because, you know, she's pushing 70, and... She shouldn't be have to. She shouldn't go through all this stuff. Like this is ridiculous. She's too old for this. Both of them are too old. He's too old to be sitting up in jail over some scamming stuff. Okay, being a career criminal, and she is too old to be going through all this stuff that she's going through with him, paying lawyer fees and putting money on the books and all that kind of stuff. Like that's just it's just weird to me. It's just really weird. All right. So, but right now, at this point in time, that's what she's doing. So that was call number one. Call number two, November 30th, 2022. He's trying to get himself together and get out of jail. That's how he started off the conversation. He said, I'm trying to get myself together and get out of jail. Grand Theft Nesto, you are not getting out of jail sweetie i don't think that's happening for you i don't think that's in the cards so you may want to get out of jail but honey i don't think that's happening not anytime soon but wishful thinking and um they was talking about the whole lawyer thing and that um he said she had 75 left i mean i guess that means 7500 left and he asked her if she paid the lawyer. She was like, yes. And he said the whole thing. She was like, no. So I guess she paid the lawyer half. And the only message she got from the lawyer was good morning and thank you when he received the money. So I guess she got to pay the other half of the money for his lawyer. And, you know, in, in this call, she doesn't feel well. You can tell her voice that she has a cold. Um, he asked her if she figured out how to send him money. It's like these calls, it's like money, money, money. It's like a money call, you know? That's all he really cared about with Shirley is money. I don't think he has any, like, genuine feelings for her. I think, he, you know, it's, it's all about money. It's all about money. That's what I'm getting from him. 
And um, Shirley was asking him about his case, you know, and she seemed stressed out. He said he loved her. He loved her for who she is. Nobody, you don't love Shirley for who she is. You love her for her money. You love her because of what she has or had. Okay, she has to build herself back up now. And you only love that lady for the money. It, just, it was just dollar signs. It was just dollar signs. That's it. Nobody can't tell me anything. It was just dollar signs. Hmm. He said if she was um, taking her vitamins. And then he started laughing. Like, okay, you ask her. You know, if she's taking her vitamins and you start laughing, like, what is so funny about that? I, I just don't understand the laughing, you know, that monthly laugh. That, that was no, I don't get it. I, I think something is really wrong with him upstairs. And I realized that Shirley has a living standard, meaning she has a way of living. She doesn't want to live below her means. She doesn't want to live too much over her means or in the middle. She rather lives the middle life, the you know, or if she can, she wants to live the high life. She has a living standard. And what I mean, I'm sorry, I think I said it wrong the first, the second, the first time. She has a living standard of she don't want to live below her means and she don't want to live in the middle. She wants to live high. Okay, she wants to live high, and I guess she has friends who has the high life, and she's trying to stay in that range. But sometimes when you are rebuilding yourself, you have to start from the bottom and work your way up. And she doesn't realize it, but that's what she has to do. But as long as she was paying Ernesto's lawyer fees, okay, that it was it's not any much of the money left for her to move around and do what she needs to do. So you're paying your husband lawyer fees. You're staying with your friend. Okay. You're talking about you want your own space. And that's understandable. Everybody wants their own space. Okay. Nobody wants to live with somebody and be in someone else's house for a long time. It doesn't matter how good of friends you are or if your family Ain't nothing like your own. So I get that with Shirley. She wants her own. She wants to be able to do what she wants to do. Walk around how she wants to walk around. Cook, how, you know, whatever she wants to do. She wants to do in her own home. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to sit down and write down what you could afford. Because this lawyer that she's got for Ernesto at this time is taking up her money. And then she's sending money to him to put on his books and stuff. Once she stops all of that, Shirley will be able to live the life that she wants to let live and clean up her credit. And I hope in the midst of all of that, she's repairing her relationship with her daughter, Sheridan, because she has grandkids and grandchildren need to be around their grandparent. Okay. So I hope at some point, hopefully in 2024, we will see that Sheridan and Shirley are rekindling their mother and daughter relationship and that she has a relationship with her grandkids because they are more important than Nesto. Okay. They are more important. The nest berries are over. Okay. There's no more than nest berries. <laughs> The nest berry is over. But anyway, so like I noticed, like I said before, she has a, a, a living standard that she wants to upkeep. And at some point, she'll get there. But right now with these phone calls, messing with Ernesto, she won't get there. And then he said, we're going to be fine. We're going to be just fine. Oh, Lord. You know, sometimes... I listen to him talk and I just want to like have a, a glass of wine because I'm like, this guy just doesn't get it. He's just, ugh. All right. So he said um, he got caught up. He said he got caught up at the wrong time. 
I don't think Shirley understood what <laughs> what he was saying because when he was talking about the sister, he was like how crazy it is now with technology and stuff and, and, and what's going on with the judges and everything. He said he got caught up at the wrong time. And she was like, yeah, you got, in the, you got put in the system at the wrong time. I think she didn't catch on to what he was saying. He Ernesto knew what he was saying. I caught on. I'm like, oh, so you, you, you know, you, um, <laughs> hey crap you got caught up at the wrong time so eventually you knew you was gonna get caught up but at that time it was the wrong time mm-hmm. gotcha gotcha so yeah and then he goes on to say that he hasn't seen her in five months and stuff like that. And he's talking about it's too much technology going on. And then they started talking about politics. And then he mentioned something about, she said, well, you know, you can't vote anyway. And I think Herschel Walker is running for something in Atlanta. I know who Herschel Walker is. And I, I just, never mind. <laughs> never mind. But anyway, he was saying something about um because he in jail, and he's not in prison that he could vote while he's in there. I'm not sure if that's true. If somebody knows if that's true, let me know in the comment section. Because I thought once you got locked up and the charges he got behind him, he wouldn't be able to vote. But I guess because he's in jail and he hasn't been convicted yet, so he can vote. They bring something to the jail for them to vote. Somebody verify that for me in the comment section. You know how we do. Thank God for the operator. You have now one minute. Call three. Now, this call happened December 5th, 2022. Now, he's feeling under the weather, under the weather, and um, her cold seemed like it's clearing up. She's sounding better, you know, and stuff like that. She talks about a car again. You know, she says she's going to need a car, you know, because when she moved, she's going to need a car to get around. He was like, yes, that's true. Whatever the case may be. And he acts as if he still got some type of pull on the outside. Like, um, I'll get back with you the next day. You know, um, I'll let you know. Like, Ernesto, who are you fooling? You don't have nobody <laughs> He act like he's the godfather or something. Like he still got pulled while he's on the inside to the outside making connections. Chow, listen, scam bill is closed, okay? It, it, scam bill is gone. So I, that, that tripped me out. You know, that actually made me cap a little bit. Like he's trying to like sound like he can get this. He could, you know, he could make moves while he in there. If that if that was the case, honey, you never mind. You you be doing a lot better than what you're doing. But anyway, let's continue. And she does say that she doesn't know anything about regular cars. And then she goes to mention Kias and stuff like that. I feel like Shirley has lived a life that she's accustomed to. And and it's not regular. You know, we are regular folk, okay? She's <laughs> the <laughs> Queen Nesbury is not regular folk, okay? She, you know, has a taste of the better lifestyle, the better living conditions, and, you know, driving the Saabs and the Mercedes and all that kind of stuff, the BMWs. So, you know, foreign cars, okay? She was driving them foreign cars. So she doesn't know anything about um, regular cars. Honey, what she needs to do is get her a Ford Taurus, a 2022 or 2023 Ford Taurus. And she better ride that like it's a new man, okay? When it's time for you to get a Range Rover and all that other stuff, you'll get it. But now you got to start from the basics. And there's nothing wrong with a Ford Taurus because, honey, I listen... I got my eye on one, okay? Shoot. She can get her, but she doesn't want a car. She wants like a, a Jeep, like a, a truck. So she can get like a Ford Explorer, 
or a Ford Expedition. You know what I'm saying? Those are still nice cars. She can get a, um, a Chevy Tahoe. You know what I'm saying? A Yukon Denali. She can get that. There's nothing wrong with those type of cars. If she want a truck, you know, but honey, Miss Shirley, a.k.a. Miss Nesbury, she she got, <laughs> she got, man, she got champagne taste, but she's on a fruit punch budget right now. And then um, he going to talk about he'll have some information for her by the next day. Nesto, please. Child, please. So she started talking about a Land Rover or a Range Rover. And he asked her if she wanted to pay, you know, pay it out, pay it out or make payments. And she said she didn't want to make any payments. She wanted to pay it out. Girl, get your place first. Get your place first and get your house furnished. If you have to take an Uber to work for now, you need to do so until you get your money right to get you a car. Okay. Now, she did tell Nesto that somebody named Rick um, asked about him and wanted to get in touch with him. He was like, Rick? Now, who is Rick? Let me know in the comment section. You know how we do over here. Let me know who is Rick. Is, is she talking about Ricky Smiley and just calling him Rick? Let me look. Let your homegirl know, okay, in the comment section, if you know. Now, he asked, like, he said, I can't trust nobody and whatever the case may be. So I'm like, okay, Nesto. Okay, you tell me you can't trust nobody. Nobody can't trust you. But anyway, she said she had foreign cars and that the Americans didn't know how to fix them because they had to order the part. She sounds so snooty and bougie when she said that. You know, the sobs and stuff. And you said the Americans, the Americans ain't know how to fix them. They didn't know what to do with them. Girl, of course, if you got a foreign car, you got to take it to like a foreign dealership. If you got a BMW, you cannot take it to Ford. If you have a Saab, you cannot take it to Ford or, or Toyota. You have to take it to the dealership where it came from, or a Saab dealership, whatever that car is, you have to take it to that dealership. Okay? But anyway, child, Miss Shirley is something else. I didn't realize how much she of uh, something else she was. All Nesto do is just laugh. And it's, it's just like, oh my God, this man is just, he's just out of control. Because all he does is laugh. Now, Core 4 got very interesting. It did. It got very interesting. So, uh, she said, hello. And he said, who is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nesto, what you mean, who is this? It's your wife. You know? <laughs> it's Mother Strawberry. What you mean? You, who is this? Like... And she sounds different. She sounds like she's doing much better. She sounds happy. And plus, old girl was at a restaurant. So it sounds as if he doesn't like when she sounds happy because all the other phone calls when she was sounding down and out and, you know, not feeling well, he had no issue. But baby, this call, she was sounding a little bit too happy and she was cleared up. So... And I don't think he liked that. So he was ear hustling on the phone call trying to see what, what she had going on in the background. Right? So he, girl, I was, listen, I was enjoying that phone call. So he was trying to figure out what she had going on. She asked if she could um, call him back because she was out. And he was like, well, can you go to, can you go outside? Can you go to the bathroom? Like he was really bothered you know, she was at a restaurant and she talked to him, well, I'm, I'm out of the restaurant and this is loud and I can't hear you. And she asked if she can call him back. Sure, didn't want to talk, honey. She wanted to enjoy her food, whoever she was at that restaurant with. Okay. She, that's what she wanted to do. She didn't have time for her nestles <laughs> on that phone. But, um, you know, she went outside and everything and 
he was told, you know, they was talking and she should have just went to the bathroom because I'm not staying out in the cold for nobody. I don't care who you are. I'm not staying out in the cold for nobody. So he was saying something about Lamont um, told him that Joe was talking ish about him. Now, who the heck is Joe? Let me know in the comment section. Lord Jesus. But anyway, so Shirley got, <laughs> she she was like, what? What are you talking about? Who said what? Nobody is saying anything about you. So I guess Nesta was in his feelings in this in this um phone call. He was definitely in his feelings. And so she was like, well, honey, I, I, I got to go. And he was like, well, can you go to the bathroom? And this time she became very frustrated. Okay. She was like, listen. <laughs> It's loud in here. She didn't want to be bothered with Nesto, and he just couldn't get the hint. He he can't catch a hint. He can't read between the lines or nothing. He was trying to stay on that phone to listen to see who he could hear in the background. He not fooling anybody. That's what he was trying to do because she was, how dare she go out and have a good time and get something to eat and sound okay while he's in jail? Child, please. She better live her life. And that's when you can hear she was like getting fed up and frustrated with him. So I was like, oh yeah, she wanted to enjoy her night out and maybe get her little walls greased. Okay. <laughs> you never know. You just never know. So at the end, I was laughing because he was he was saying something. I forgot what he was saying. She was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> She was pissed. That was it. She was like, okay, 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 okay. You could tell when she gets aggravated. <laughs> but anyway, call number four was very interesting. Now, Jonesy Babes, do me a favor. Let me know who is Joe down in the comment section. And if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts about the phone call if you listen to them. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.